So next is also a junior, David. Uh, we'll be giving a speech on reaching new heights. What do we want? Love flying airplane noises. And when do we want them? Now. Yeah? Yeah? All right. So, the human race has always looked up to the stars, to the cosmos, and wondered what was floating around up there. And uh, we've been progressing. We've been able to look up into the skies. Aviation has helped us out with this goal. In 1903, the first powered flight by the Wright brothers allowed for us to start an adventure that would land us to the moon in 66 years. In that time, we also broke the sound barrier, orbited the Earth, and we created missiles that could go halfway across the world and kill civilizations. Aviation is, essentially, the flight or operation of an aircraft. That can be an airplane, helicopter, dirigible, which is a blimp or a zeppelin and it affects millions of people a day. And at any given moment, about 690,000 people are in the air. Now, it is a silent form of innovation in our lives. We don't usually hear about it. I first got introduced to aviation when I was a little tight. Uh, I was given a flight simulator, and uh, I started using it over and over. And since then, I've progressed to volunteering at a uh, local airport and uh, I'm currently studying to become a pilot. Now, aviation affects all walks of life. It is with us in transportation. What used to take months to cross the Atlantic now takes a mere few hours. Helps in disaster relief. We're able to get to remote areas of the world and provide care. We're able to send organs and things of that sort, which are very time sensitive in uh, preservation to people who need them. Aviation's always looking up, and uh, it's making new strides. We now have access to drones. Now, what was a military innovation, as you can see with the Predator and Reaper drone over there, is now available to us, as you can see on the left. Drones are able to deliver our Amazon packages. They're able to take video and help with home defense. Another new innovation that's coming around is civilian supersonic aircraft. Now, in 2003, the Concorde program, as you can see, that's a Concorde, uh, was canceled because of structural failures. Concords were supersonic jets, which means that they can fly faster than the speed of sound. With that jet, you could get from New York to London in less than three hours, which is incredible. In the next 15 years, we're looking at having new supersonic jets from Spike Aerospace and Arion, and this will allow for travel to become much quicker and much more efficient. We're also going up with Richard Branson's uh, Space Scion Virgin Galactic, which will allow for us to go up into the stratosphere, into space, and wait for Earth to rotate towards us before we go back down. This will cut time drastically for getting across the world. It'll also help for more efficient space travel and more efficient travel in general. Here we have the Falcon 9 space rocket. Now the Falcon 9 rocket is something that just happened in the past few months. And what it is, is it's a rocket that is able to land by itself and take off again by itself. Now what's incredible is that it doesn't leave any pollution or anything of that sort. As you can see, here comes the rocket. It's going to land on this drone boat. And you can see as it comes down, the thrust is going to shoot up, and it's going to be able to slow itself down. And there it goes. It lands successfully. This is incredible because we're going to be able to now go to comets, asteroids, other planets such as Mars. And we're going to be able to land and take off successfully without having to do the whole countdown, 10, 9, 8, and have all the debris and rocket things. Now, in addition, we are also doing new uh, studies with NASA, which are going to see how the body is affected by gravity. So, in the past year, a new study went out 
were twin brothers, the only twin sp uh, space astronauts, uh, Scott and Mark Kelly, did a program where Scott went up into space for just over a year. Mark stayed on the ground. Because they're identical twins, they ran the same tests on both of them. And what happened? They saw how gravity affects the human body because Scott didn't have any affecting him. So they saw how it affects you physically, mentally, how it helps with your different types of motor skills. It's incredible. And this is going to help us for when we go to Mars or other planets or uh, moons, such as the moons of Saturn, Jupiter, uh, so that we can see how you're able to live in space for a long period of time. Lastly, we're doing more and more research in uh, rovers for Mars and other planets and bodies, like I said. And we're going to be able to see how we can reach out and branch more into the universe and reach new heights. Thank you.